They're going to send you to Detroit. They do two nights in every city they're going to play. Two nights, two completely different set lists, and two completely different sets of opening bands. So Ford Field in Detroit, Friday night, November the 10th, with Pantera and Mammoth WVH. It's Wolfie Van Halen. And then Sunday night, November the 12th, with Five Finger Death Punch and Ice Nine Kills. And we will also throw you a $100 Circle K gas card for that trip to the Motor City. So there's another chance for you to win at WMMS.com if you can't get up to our window here. But we're going to be playing Mare Guitar today, tomorrow, and Wednesday for these tickets. Ga- I paid three ten for gas this morning. Hotcha, hotcha. Nice. It's like two eighty nine by me. Even better. Yeah. Even better. Very nice. So uh, we'll do that um, at 420 today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. I'm not saying all week because we're not doing it all week. Um, but again, if you strike out with me, you can go to WMMS.com and uh, there'll be another pair of tickets there for you too. So two nights, two different sets, two opening acts in the round at the 50-yard line at Ford Field. So let's say you've never seen Metallica. Great way to jump in with both feet. If you've seen a million times, uh, you've probably never seen them like this. Unless you, you know, went to some big thing <laughs> overseas. Mm-hmm. So in Puerto Rico or something. Um, oh, by the way, um, let me do this properly here. Um, a guy named, what's the guy's name again? Oh, Bob McGrath. You might not know the name Bob McGrath, uh, but you probably know the face. Uh, he was 90. He died at home yesterday. Bob McGrath was one of the original cast members of Sesame Street. And uh, he was on that show for half a century. He was one of the first humans on Sesame Street. I don't know if he had, st- you know, some of those long time people got uh, pinched a few years back. He was on the show from its very first episode in 1969 until 2016. So there you go. He's been off uh, for uh, a few years over there. You know, I feel like meeting somebody around the neighborhood today. How about it? Oh, oh, who are the people in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. Say, who are the people in your neighborhood? Well, they're the people that you meet when you're walking down the street. They're the people that you meet each day. That's Bob McGrath singing with the Muppets there on Sesame Street. Boy, man, I think about these people that are on Sesame Street. It's been they always make a big deal over the years that there's a new person on the show, not a Muppet. They always make a big deal when there's a new person in the show because it happens so infrequently. You know, Maria was on that show for a long time. And uh, then she left a few years ago. So on the one hand, like, it's pr- probably not getting rich doing Sesame Street, but you have a regular gig. You know, you, you know what they say, never pass up an opportunity to have sex or be on television. And this guy was on uh, Sesame Street for 50 years. He's like, I got a pretty good gig here. I get to talk to socks. <laughs> I get to sing some songs, get to make kids feel good about themselves in a non-creepy way. And um, that's probably a pretty good gig. He was one of the most prominent faces of the entire Sesame Street empire. And part of the films, part of video games, sing-along productions. He's from a town called Ottawa, Illinois, which I will tell you is in the middle of nowhere. Studied music at the University of Michigan, go blue, and uh, got married in 1958. And it was one of the first cast members on Sesame Street. He had been pursuing a solo recording career. So he's like, I'm going to be a singer, whatever the songs were at that time. I think he did one called I Want to Be a Singer. And (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what better way to signal to people what your plan is than to do a song called, very meta, do a song called I Want to Be a Singer. And he signed with Columbia Records' Japanese label. 
And so he was, as the saying goes, big in Japan for a while, uh, but then came back and landed on Sesame Street. And uh, was uh, very, he was the probably the most recognizable person human-wise over there on Sesame Street. Because this is a show that is seen around the world. So it's like you're a bigger deal than you could have ever been uh, singing your song, hit song, I Want to Be a Singer. It's a global broadcast. It's a global live stream event. Um, so he's been married to his wife since 1958. I wonder if being on Sesame Street helps that. Because you're never going to be groupies. You're never going to have to worry there might about... Be. Like adult Disney people, there might be adult Sesame Street people. I don't know. But if those it's aren't the kind the same, of people yeah. that you're going to want to mess with, you know. Uh, you're just kind of in a bubble there. You know, you, you're singing with Snuffle Up, I guess. Nobody's going to assume. I'm still blown away that it's Snuffle Up, I guess, and not Snuffle Up, I guess. Well, it could, what the hell is that? Uh, it, it can be whatever you want it to be, really. Well, I want it to be the right thing, but it's just. Snuffle I, Up, I, I just guess. never knew that until. One day on this show, probably six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. and I'm still not comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, people asking if the iHeart app is down. Yes, it is. I have been going back and forth with our uh, digital team. The people on the digital team, see, this is what happens. I go, hey, we're having an issue with the WMMS, and they'll hit me back, and they'll go, yeah, I just tried it. It's working fine. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is it, what do I say? Like, right. it's not working for anybody here. What am I supposed to tell them? A lot of times these issues correct themselves, the girl says. Great. Well, my dad would it's not doing anything uh, on my phone. I'm hearing from a lot of listeners who listen to us on the app, and they can't listen to it either. Anywho, okay, well, uh, she says that they'll monitor it. <gasps> monitor what? It's working fine for you. Hey, we'll keep an eye on it. Okay, thank you. So anyway, uh, RIP to Bob McGrath, who was 90 and uh, was uh, with Sesame Street from the very, very first. The photo I'm looking at looks like um, perhaps he might have used some of that Sesame Street money on his teeth. Well, that's good. No, he should have. Oh, should have. He, yeah, he, I he, thought you said he, he might did. have wanted to gotcha. do that. See, here's another ah. problem because you're working with Muppets who don't have teeth. Uh, and after a while, a you are so ensconced in that environment it's that right. you probably, the lines blur between you and talking sock. So you start to forget that you're a person. Sure, you're doing person things. You're looking in the mirror every day. You're showering and shaving and doing all the things that a normal person would do. But you're like, if if being toothless is good enough for Bird and Ernie, ah, uh, and Big Bird, who I guess wouldn't have had teeth anyway, then it's, uh, I, what do I need to worry about? I always thought that would have been the best move there on Sesame Street is the only Muppet to give teeth should have been Big Bird. Because it's not something that's reflected in real life. If you're already playing in this fantasy world with these Muppets, why not give the giant bird horrifying teeth? Horrifying. But that, well, it would have been. Yeah. Not intentionally, but it would have been. Because birds don't have teeth. There's got to be some Muppets that have teeth, right? Don't Maybe know. Like, I've never, I don't recall ever seeing I mean, a Muppet Dr. with teeth. teeth. In... Well, Dr. Teeth. Yeah, the girl in Dr. Teeth. Yeah. I think the lead singer did too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So some of them do. All right. Well, Muppets mm-hmm. with teeth. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not the, maybe not the Sesame Street Muppets. Maybe the yeah. Muppet Show Muppets. Right. Doctor Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Oh. Hey, Woody. <laughs> speaking of mayhem. Ellen. Yes. Hello, Woody. How's your How's your day, brother? So far, so good. Um. I, it's a little old that probably in the United States that the word Muppet is a slang word in England for uh, an idiot, right? Did you yeah. know that? I did not know that. I did know that. Yeah, well, look, look what well, Bill's got one on Ellen. That's, that's no, no, it's great. I, I, there's a lot of things I don't know, and that's one of them. <laughs> Bill one, Alan, 
a million dollars. Right. <laughs> but hey, uh, guys, uh, I don't know why you guys brought, you guys brought up uh, Sesame Street, and I just watched a, a movie with uh, an actor, and I cannot think of his name for the life of me, but he's been in a million movies, but he got his start on The Electric Company. Do you remember this? Morgan Freeman. Another kid. Morgan. Morgan Freeman, yes, yeah. sir. Morgan, Morgan Freeman Fre was on yeah. the Electric Company. He was Count Dracula, and he was about yeah. Yeah, and you know, he, you know, that he got his jump from there, and he's probably made I don't know, fifty new fifty movies since then. He's made. He's probably made fifty movies. Yes, yes. Uh, Morgan Freeman has made at least fifty movies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just that I was well, I was watching a movie with him. I'm like that guy's jump off point was the electric company yeah and i started i started singing it do you remember the jingle Stay i always up. i was always a big electric company fan man i like that show rita moreno was on there and she was super foxy and yeah i liked the, the electric company yeah I, I, I was too it was it was it was a pretty cool show morgan freeman yeah, now morgan will basically do Morgan Freeman will do whatever somebody wants him to do. I think he's like Bruce Willis in that if you can make his quote, he will do what I don't know that he's reading the scripts or anything. He will do whatever movie uh, somebody asks him to do because he's in that uh, he's in that part of his career now where more of his movies just go straight to streaming or DVD and you never see them as opposed to like being in the theater. So he's not getting the dime he used to get, but he still wants to keep working. Is, I assume. That, I mean, after kind of yeah, after a while. I mean, if you get a little older, I mean, he still shows up. You know, he's in the Dark Knight movies, and he's in. You know, he still shows yeah, yeah. up in plenty of things. But that's a guy who likes working. Man, he will be in whatever you want him to be in. Yeah, and I'm sure he's probably I don't know past his uh, top dollar gigs. I don't know. How it works, but maybe uh, I mean he's not he's not making nineteen uh, early nineties Bruce Willis money or or whatever you know that case is me. But Bruce Willis is working all the time. And I'll have to get away from the the, the, the actor. Yes. But so okay. he's he's still working and he's working for he's working for less money. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that that might be right. Yes. Let's dissect this some more. <laughs> Think that all right, thank you, Woody. I've I've gotta I've gotta move on five minutes ago. Wasn't Morgan Freeman the guy that there was the rumor that he had an affair with his step granddaughter? Was that Morgan Freeman? Yeah. Right. Ah, oh, how about that? I mean, when you've done everything you want to do, things are gonna get weird because you're gonna start looking for stuff that nobody has any experience with I think he's one of the last like Zoroastrians or something too Morgan Freeman he's into some stuff so yeah like his step granddaughter he and his but then again I mean you know it makes no blood. it makes for a salacious headline but what's the problem I'm having but an affair when you tell the story of how you met I think that's a problem <laughs> It's not a great story to tell. Why? It might not fall into, mo you know, it's not a Hallmark movie, but, uh, you know. Oh, God, you know what we started watching this weekend? What's that? I'm a big John Henson fan. I think he is eternally underrated. I think he's, you know, John Henson Yeah, is, like the yeah. talk soup guy? Skunk boy, yeah. He, I think yeah. he's very funny. He's very dry. What is he doing? I haven't seen anything he he's doing in a well, while. Well, I haven't either, but we I didn't realize that the show wasn't on anymore. The show called Wipeout. I love that show. Oh, Wipeout's a fun show. They yeah. rebooted it with John Cena and Nicole Byer, I guess. We didn't watch that. We watched the older ones. It's John Anderson from ESPN. It's John Henson or the hosts. And then this foxy chick, this Jill Wagner, who I think does Hallmark movies now. But the that original incarnation of Wipeout ended like almost 10 years ago. So it's going back like 2008, 2009 when it started. We we're just looking for something that like we could watch with our kid that wasn't like, you know, YouTube or something. And so we landed on Wipeout. And I don't like watching uh, video of, like, people breaking bones or, you know, those mm -hmm. MTV shows where people are, like, you know, just crushing their spines and things. 
But boy, that wipeout's funny. Holy cow, is that it's funny? So funny. These people get battered. Dude, annihilated. Trying to get fifty thousand dollars. Absolutely annihilated. I'm like, and there's like this. They did a family one where this people have their cousins or their, this one woman brings her mom who's like sixty eight. Beautiful. This poor woman doesn't want to be there. No. Why this would daughter she? clearly She's get clobbered. This daughter, <laughs> and I don't think she knew. Like obviously, you are wavered out the ass on a show like that. I was I was uh, slow mowing through the credits because I wanted to see who their writers were because it can't all be Henson and Anderson writing this stuff. I'm like, clearly they have writers who are funny and know what they're doing. There wasn't one credit for a writer, but there were 15 credits for medics. Yeah, well, on that show, you need a lot of medics. A lot of medics. <laughs> I mean, I I like Wipeout, but my heart is really with MXC because that's the original Wipeout. Most extreme elimination challenge. Oh God, that's the Japanese show. The Japanese show where they do like the voiceover, and it was on Spike TV. Basically, the only thing that was on Spike TV when that was a channel. It was like twenty years ago. It was yeah. like a hundred ways like, to die and yeah. MXC. Yeah, oh, I remember a hundred ways to die. I'm surprised you haven't seen MXC. It was I don't think like I have. it was basically like people wear like weird costumes, and then they do similar events to what they do was it? on Wipeout. But they'd, uh, it wouldn't be like in a nice. Was it, it pool. wasn't dubbed, right? It was dubbed. Okay. And it was Maybe like I have like Kenny Blankenship and how oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. But they they would like do these funny uh, overdubs of the contestants, and they would have some rough moments, and they would all be like in mud. It'd always be like they didn't have pads. Or clean water. It'd be like muddy water, and it was very funny. Well, watching Wipeout, I said to Gwen, I go, this had to have been a Japanese game show. Mm -hmm. It just got that vibe to it. Except that no one's naked. (laughs) That's usually part and parcel of those Japanese game shows is like there's one female who's naked and everybody else is gawking at her trying to get her to, you know. But uh, Wipeout's funny. I think there was, I can't remember the name of the show. It was like, Yoshi's Castle or something like that was the original game show in Japan, and then they just made uh, MXC out of it for America, hmm. which I think they're all available on Prime Video. Vic Romano was the other guy. Yeah. People were telling me. All right. Um, when the app works, you can always leave us messages, by the way. People are telling me that MMS is the only channel they can't get. Lucky us. Hmm. So I guess that girl much to me. was correct. Yeah, we've crashed the a W M M S feed. Uh, yeah. So anyway, just tread lightly, I guess. Hey guys, I'm a podcast listener. I work at night, which is why I don't listen to you guys live. And I was wondering if you guys would put the best of shows on the app so I could listen to them while you were gone. What she say? She works at night. Yeah. yeah. Huh. You do right. I do, yes. All of the uh, all, our last live show of the year is next Thursday, and we'll be back on January third. And I will put all of the best of shows on the app. I will uh, post those each day after they air. Uh, so there you go. While I'm on vacation, that's my commitment to this audience. While I'm on vacation, air quotes, I'll be uh, posting the podcast of this program uh, every evening. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, they're also going to kill uh, DVDs uh, through Netflix. Uh, for the five of you did. who are still doing that, they still have two million people who get their uh, Netflix in the mail. Wow. I used to love getting DVDs in the mail. Yeah, back in the day, like yeah, it was the only thing that it. wasn't junk mail. It was nice. You're like, oh, here's that movie I, I ordered two weeks ago. There was ago. something about having like a physical copy that made you feel more... I, I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it's just I like getting that in the mail. It was like the first piece of mail I ever used to get because I had like a Netflix subscription after I got like my first job when it was like legit like five ninety nine, like the cheapest it ever was or something like that. And it was just like, oh, here's a little gift to myself, and I just pop it in the DVD player. I, I was know, always worried something adult. was going to happen to it, and then Netflix is going to be like, well, that's two hundred dollars. Yeah, so. but that's not how it went. Like, if anything went missing, you just report it missing, and Netflix is like. Yeah, that's we the cost of doing business. Oh yeah, like, we'll, oh yeah. okay. Well, yeah, it was no it problem because it would. Yeah, because <laughs> they said <laughs> they said that you could keep it for as long as you want. There's no return date. You just won't get any more movies until you so send it back. Yeah. 
I'm I'm probably just recalling my blockbuster days. But I remember Well, there's a there's a meme going around where people would talk about having Netflix mailed to them and the little kids like Oh, so back in your day, the internet came in the mail. Yeah. I thought it was long gone. They're still doing it. They yeah. said uh, they're going to kill it next year. I don't know how you do How do you order the DVDs now? You go out online. Go, go to yeah, Netflix. You have to have yeah. that plan. See, I, I completely forgot how I used to do it because this was 2011 at the inf- uh, infancy of Netflix. I was at infantry. Man, <laughs> on the infantry of Netflix. Netflix I goes back to like that. 2000. Like it's It's been around a lot longer than you think. Yeah. I'm just, because I'm, we, I got a Roku... When they first came out, and that was 2007 or 8, like I, I bought them, they, they had like a, because I knew that it was going to be big, and I knew it would be easier for the kids than having a bunch of DVDs to always put in, so I what, bought a bunch of Rokus and put them on all our TVs. What do you think made it so big? Because I feel like- It's within- convenient. Yeah, but if it was around since 2000, and it hit its peak like after 2011, what, what was the- how did it get so big? There's so much competition. Because there wasn't any competition for Black the Blockbusters were slowly going away. Yeah. yeah. You had to still go to a brick and mortar store and stand in line on a Saturday night behind a, a bunch of other the, mooks and, you know, up rent until, your movies. I still, like a few years ago, we went to like the kiosk outside of like a uh, Walgreens. There's still a Red, yeah, they the Red, Red Box, Box yeah. still a thing. Box, yeah. Yeah. We those are still that. around. A lot of people go to those still. I like when I, I'm on a trip or something, like staying in a cabin and they don't have streaming and you have to use. DVDs. It's kind of fun to be in that situation, and you go to the Red Box and, and find something to watch. That's when, really rough in it when you're in a cabin. Yeah. It's just a DVD. When player. I moved and I <laughs> had four I boxes it. of DVDs, everyone called me a psycho. Yes, you're but a psycho. Uh, maybe I'm just cute and quirky and roughing it. Uh, having a couple of DVDs is cute and quirky and roughing it. Three hundred too many boxes. <laughs> so you're saying? I remember ten years ago when Netflix was trying to split off into two things. You remember, yeah, Flickster. Quickster. Was it Quickster or Flickster? Yeah, it was Flickster? called Quickster, and they yeah. were like, okay, so Netflix is going to be online, Quickster is going to be DVD only, and people hated it. It didn't even launch. No. The 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 uh, backlash was so swift. They're like, what? So I got to do two accounts now? And it's, what? Why? But I guess they're going to kill the DVDs next year. So for those of you, I mean, worldwide, it's two million people, so not a lot of people, but you're going to want to get your um, affairs in order. If you're a big Netflix DVD recipient, I got a break. I want to text 35192, AlanCoxShow.com to watch, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7.